Hello friends, this is Mahesh Kumar. Our YouTube channel is Matthews. It is an online math platform. And in this video, we are going to discuss about inverse Z transform. So before going to see the inverse Z transform, let us see about the definition of convolution and the statement of convolution theorem and then problems on inverse Z transform by using convolution theorem. So the first one is definition of convolution. Yes, the convolution of two sequences sequence x of, uh, x of n and the sequence y of n is defined as x of n star y of n is equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity f of k g of n minus k and this is for if the sequence are non-casual and the same definition but slightly uh, changed here. That is uh, x of n star y of n is equal to summation k equal to 0 to n f of k g of n minus k if the sequences are casual. And the function f of t star g of t is equal to summation k equal to 0 to n f of k t g of n minus k into t if the sequence are defined as a function. We can easily understood about this uh, convolution statement uh, the convolution st statement is defined in the operator form x of n star y of n that star is called as a, a convolution operator and it is defined as that x of n is uh, defined here in the right hand side f of k so x of n when you are having x of n that x of n can be written as f of k and y of n is an another sequence that sequence can be uh, represented as g of n minus k and this is for non-casual when the non-casual means that k value it is moving from minus infinity to plus infinity right the same thing but when the k value from 0 to n that is the k value is lies only a positive uh, numbers then up to n then the uh, sequences are casuals means then x of n star y of n is equal to summation k equal to 0 to n f of k g of n minus k. Sometimes the sequence x of n and g of n it may be represented as a function. When it is represented as a function as f of t star g of t then the convolution theorem is convolution uh, definition of the convolution is summation k equal to 0 to n f of k into capital T g of n minus k into capital T if the sequence are represented as a functions. Now uh, we will see about the statement of convolution theorem. If z inverse of x of t is equal to x of n and z inverse of y of z is equal to y of n then the z inverse of x of z y of z is equal to x of n star y of n that is that x of n that x of n value is it is a z inverse of x of z and y of n is is a z inverse of y of z is equal to y of n so we can apply it here then we will get z inverse of x of z star z inverse of y of z so the importance of convolution theorem when you are having uh, two functions with the form of multiplication like uh, x of z into y of z that expression can be expressed as z inverse of x of z star z inverse of y of z. Now let us uh, uh, use this convolution theorem statement for finding inverse z transform. The question is find the inverse z transform of z square by z minus a into z minus b. So we have to find out inverse z transform of this function. So to find z inverse of z square divided by z minus a into z minus b. Right? So let us consider it. Now z inverse of z square by z minus a into z minus b which can be expressed as in the multiple form z by 
z minus a into z by z minus b. Now you just recall the inverse z transform uh, convolution theorem. If z inverse of x of z into y of z, then it can be written as z inverse of x of z star z inverse of y of z. By applying convolution theorem a statement, then we get the another step as z inverse of z by z minus a star z inverse of z by z minus b. Now we applied the statement of convolution theorem and we know the result of z inverse of z by z minus a. It is nothing but a power n. So a power n star and here z inverse of z by z minus b. So that can be expressed as b power n. It is nothing but a result. So now we have a two function a power n star b power n. And coming to the uh, definition of convolution. It is a power n star b power n. By the definition, by applying the definition of convolution, it is state that x of n star y of n, which is equal to summation k equal to 0 to n f of k g of n minus k. This is what the definition of convolution of two, uh, two function or two sequences. Now we will apply that here. Then the first function is nothing but a power n. So we can write it as summation k equal to 0 to n. a power n can be written as a power k. So the function what? x of n. x of n can be written as f of k. right? So here a power n. So a power n can be written as a power k. And then the second function is b power n. And in the de definition, the second function is y of n. So that y of n can be written as g of n minus k. Like that, here b power n minus k. So the next thing, you just take uh, b power n outside of this summation because it is uh, constant only. So we can take it as outside from this summation. Then we get summation over k equal to 0 to n a divided by b the whole power k. And by applying k value, putting a k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. up to n, then the series comes as that uh, a by b the whole power 0, it is 1. Plus by putting a k equal to 1, you will get uh, a by b. Plus by putting k equal to 2, you will get a by b the whole square plus etc. up to by putting k equal to n, then you will get a by b the whole power n. Now it is a, a finite series and the series can be expressed as a by b the whole power n plus 1 minus 1 divided by a minus a by b minus 1. Since we know that uh, one of the series it is uh, 1 plus x plus x square plus etc uh, plus x power n which is equal to x power n minus x power n plus 1 minus 1 x power n plus 1 uh, minus 1 divided by x minus 1. By using this uh, result here we will write a by b the whole power n plus 1 minus 1 divided by a by b minus 1. Now you just take uh, cross multiplication, then we get b power n into a power n plus 1 divided by b power n plus 1 minus 1, the whole term divided by a by b minus 1. Now taking cross multiplication, we get uh, b power n into a power n plus 1 minus b power n plus 1 the whole term divided by b power n plus 1 and then the whole term divided by a minus uh, b the whole term divided by b. So this b you can take it into the numerator it is comes uh, b power n plus 1. So b power n plus 1 into a power n plus 1 minus b power n plus 1 term divided by b power n plus 1 and then whole term divided by 
a minus b so now that b power n plus 1 b power n plus 1 cancelled so we will get a power n plus 1 minus b power n plus 1 divided by a minus b therefore we get the in inverse z transform of inverse z transform of z square divided by z minus a into z minus b value as a power n plus 1 minus b power n plus 1 divided by a minus b that's all guys thank you for watching this video if you like this video you can subscribe our channel 